Good wow, good girl. Jessie, good girl. You are a good girl. Her owner said they could never get her to lay down. Yes, that's uh. They could get her to sit sometimes okay. and wait before her food. Good. They never could get her to lay down. We're doing some downproofing. She's caught, she wants yeah. to go, but you've also told her to stay. That's yeah. what, hence the half sit, half down. That's what proofing, <laughs> that is what proofing is all about. Actually, that's a good thing to talk about. We haven't talked about it in a little bit. Proofing is mm -hmm. a very important part of the training process. Basically what that is, in case you're unaware, um, the dog knows the command, which is great. You've successfully taught the dog the command. So you say down, you say sit, you say come, you sit. They know what you mean, they can accomplish it, everything's great. The proofing process is now taking the dog who knows these commands, focusing on a command, right now we're using down. I say down, and then in the environment, I'm gonna provide triggers that are gonna make her want to get up out of her down and either go towards the trigger, something she wants to interact with, or go away from it, something that's scary, like a vacuum cleaner or something. Both of those types of triggers are what we proof the commands were. Now we start in the training room, but then we bring it outside and we bring it into the neighborhood of the community and everything gets generalized. So proofing the command, uh, you don't want to overlook that and you want to put a lot of um, effort into making sure your dog is properly proofed so that when you go out on a real outing in the real world, that it doesn't all fall apart. Okay? And these are excellent, these are excellent little things I'm doing here. Look. I have her down, I don't say a word to her, I open up the door. Okay? Now she's looking at me, she gets a good girl. So she learned in this session, when she sees something she wants, instead of just getting up and going towards it, stop myself, look at my hand there, gets a good girl, right? The first choice she made was just got up and went out the door. That got a correction. So now she's learning there's another skill. There's a skill that I didn't have before that's very important. When I see something that I want, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and look at my handler. And my handler's going to say, no, that's not for you. Or, okay, go ahead and go check it out. But I have to go through my owner to get to figure out how to deal with the situation. That's called a follower. Okay? That allows me to, be, to lead. Which is the easiest and most, actually, um, I would say, beneficial way to live with a dog. Because the dog will get more outings and actually be included in our life much more and on a much more personal level because they listen. We, we don't have to put them away when the world comes knocking at our door. They can be involved. They know how to be involved. Okay? This is very good. Chessie. Good. So her name doesn't mean the release. This is typical. We go through this with every dog. Um, and that's typically because when they're with People, people use the name for, you know, people just use the name for everything. So the dog just hears the name and guesses what to do next. She's learning not to guess. She's learning her name means look at me because I'm going to tell you what to do next. I'm going to give you directions. So the name just means look and listen. Right? Good girl. Chessie, good. Break. Yeah, girly. Good girl. you at being a follower. This is. We call it like turning a corner. It's when the dog starts to see the follower position as beneficial and they start to choose to be a follower. I'm seeing her choose that today for the first time, really just. So what we're seeing in the beginning process, what we see is a dog who did all these bad behaviors when they're saying, I'm not gonna do those anymore. I'm gonna look at this, this guy and I'm going to follow his direction. But in the beginning, it looks like this. Can you see her kind of like this? And she's like, I don't know what's off limits. I'm walking on eggshells because I don't know what's off limits. Now that looks bad, but it's part of the process for her to then, now what she's gonna do is build up confidence when, because now the attitude's, I don't see it. 
right? So now, as we lift, she's going to know exactly what it is, that, what behaviors caused the corrections. I explain it to them very clearly, and then she knows, oh, if I avoid those, there's no, there's no consequences. And then you see the confidence go up. And then the confidence is up, and we go out on outings, and we go out into the real world, we go on hikes, and she sees the benefit of being a follower. I get to do all this fun stuff, and I can avoid consequence. I can go my whole day without any consequence, as long as I just don't do these things that I'm aware of now, and as long as I listen when the command's given to me, and then a dog is confident. Even more confident than they were before they show up, okay? We get insecure dogs that are just a mess when they show up, but by the time they get done with this process, they're more confident than they've ever been because they understand their world and their position in the pack, and, and, and they understand the form of correction, they understand how to avoid it, they're very well educated on it, so they're very confident, okay? But first, this is common, good. It'll only take a couple days, and she'll be back. She'll, you know, because she'll know, okay, don't do this, don't do this, do this, do this, we're good. All right? So, one last test for her before we wrap this up. I'm going to randomly, without her expecting, I'm going to ask her to D-O-W-N, which is the thing that we're working on today. And this is something at home that obviously she's never done. She just won't down for them. How long do they own her for? They only had her two months. Oh, two months, okay. Two months. When were they going to get the down if they didn't get the training? Some, my point is that if a dog just decides that they don't have to listen, then they just won't, mm -hmm. okay? So let's see what she does. She has, she has options here. I'm going to tell her to down. If she does, which she's aware of now, there is no concept, there is no punishment, okay? If she bucks the system and doesn't want to listen, then we'll introduce a consequence, a punisher, and if she continues to stop not listen, we'll increase the intensity of that punisher. But if she listens, she bypasses it. Okay? That's, that's the dynamic between leader and follower. Okay? We're able to provide rewards and punishments based off from the choices the dog makes. So that, that actually shapes the dog and the choices they make. They, they, they make on their own tomorrow. Eventually, she's going to be making these choices, and I'm not even going to have to prompt her. Right? That's just what happens. Here we go. Down. I was, I haven't touched the collar, and my body did not give her much information here. Good. Wow. Okay. Good girl. Good. No correction. If I were to correct her, I'd start very low. Something that's not punishing. It's associated with a punisher that can come, which is just a low stem. And then she would, if she listened to that, we don't, we're not going any higher. If she doesn't listen to that, we dial up until I see an expression on her that tells me she cares. And now I know where my relevance is on the collar. So I know, it's not a random number. I dial up to get the expression I want to see, okay? But, which is motivation to actually avoid or turn off the pressure and then she'll down. And, and then we'll do it again until we get a rep just like that. See the shaking? The shaking here is a dog who is not used to restrictive movement. She lived, she grew up outside uh, in a fenced in area from what I believe in. So there's no, the only thing that restricted her movement was a physical fence. There wasn't like a person that, or that, that, that influenced her with leadership to hold her still. She's never had that. So what we're seeing is a dog who had old associations, which is like, I heard a noise over there, so I'm gonna go right over and check it out. Or here's a set over here, I'm gonna just go over here and check it out. If I'm bored, I'm just gonna pace. Maybe even bark, right? That's what she used to do, demand bark at you, just do something with me. Now we're seeing those, that old association, it, she's fighting it, she's self-regulating it, she's doing the new expectation. Okay, so we talk about that. So her old associations are being triggered, you can see it. When she, when she hears the washer, you see her, she wants to go check it out. The, but the new expectation's here, so she's vibrating. And then what happens, over time, as the new expectation becomes the new association, and she stabilizes. So again, it doesn't, it's not the greatest looking thing to be like, look, I'm training the dog, and it's, but we're rehabbing the dog. We're not, I'm not really thinking training, I'm thinking behavior. I'm thinking, how can I stabilize this dog 
and make a domesticated companion out of it? How can I get her beliefs to be one of which that is harmonious with uh, dog and human life when we share our lives with a dog? So I'm thinking that way and I'm using the commands as coping skills for her to use on her own, even, to get through stressful situations or situations she doesn't know what to do. If you don't know what to do, if you just relax and look at your handler, that's the answer. They'll tell you. So <clears throat> that's the mechanism that she didn't have before, which is a follower. <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. <clears throat> Still getting over that cold. Good. Gonna sit here. Good. Me sitting down is a trigger, too. And all these things, are, you know, this is really, really good. We do take it a step further with rehab, um, and we want just so we know that she understands that there's a way. If she's wondering, when do I get up? When am I? When am I getting up? I don't know. Is that sound something that I can get up to? When we're done proofing, when she's not. <coughs> She's not making mistakes through the proofing process anymore. Like we can do stuff like this, we can have dogs come in is a good one. I want to teach her the next level, which is for her to relax a little bit more. So if I shush her and I give her a little stim, I want to see her reaction. If her reaction is getting up, it's wrong. Getting up would be if I release you or if I give you another command like a recall. If you're already in a down state and you, and you feel stim, it means relax more. So this is kind of like the contextual work that we do. So she'll understand, and it's amazing that dogs can understand this. So I'm gonna come in on a number that she just barely feels here. I'm gonna try to. And I wanna see what she does, and then if she, need, if she gets confused, then I will start to tell her what to do. If she doesn't listen, then we go into punishment. So we're not punishing getting the answer wrong. We're punishing the lack, uh, we're punishing attitude the lack of trying, the lack of committed effort, which is state of mind training too. Okay? Let me go to like a three here, see if she feels it. I'm gonna hold this pressure. Right, she, I think she feels that, okay? That's a four, I ended up on a four. That's a cue that I'm giving her. That's a good response. It's not completely done. Good gal, but see my pressure's on, so that means that we're not done. But I tell her good girl as if, I like that you just tried something there. That was nice. I'm gonna give her some information. Down. Okay. Good girl. Down. And she's gonna learn the next step here. See, I have mine. Yeah. My eye is telling me she already understands, but she's trying to find a compromise. So it's, we call it like charming you or like sucking up or buttering you up. Um, oftentimes if you tell a dog to do something, they'll be like, I don't really want to do that, but I'll do, I'll do this instead. Like if you tell a dog to go on a place bed and they're like, I don't want to go on that place bed, I'll lay down next to it or something like that. Uh, this, that's what I'm seeing here. Because I'm seeing her sniff and think about doing what I'm asking her, and then maybe, maybe I'll go on my back or show my belly or something, right? Good, I'm fine with that. Good. Whatever she finds comfortable, as long as like, I like that head kind of like the way it is, where they're, they're kind of like this on the floor, because it closes the mouth and then breathes through their nose, which relaxes the brain. When you see a dog panting and they're not hot, they're not hot, they're, they're stressing about, they're actually thinking about opportunities. They're like, well, they're not committing, they're thinking about, well, what if I run into the bathroom, or what if I do this? So when I see a dog kind of relax and breathe through their nose, you see that relaxedness when they start to breathe through their nose, um, and they're not really running through the thoughts, they're committed. But that's also why she doesn't want to do that, because that means she's being committed, and that's what this is all about. That's what this whole program is about, is creating a committed follower. She already knows the commands. A lot of them already know them. They just don't want to listen. They don't, you have to, in the natural world, earn the leadership position through kind of like rituals of hierarchy, hierarchical conversations, right? And they, they have a bunch of different ways they do that with their own. And they're learning, she's learning the way that it, it operates with a human. Shh, down. See, she knows, see? 
So I see her thinking about doing what I asked her, but hanging in there to see if, because this is pattern, this is not her fault. She's patterned to say, if I ignore a human, they'll stop asking. A lot of dogs do that, that act of ignoring, but they just pretend they don't hear you and then you, you get, the human gets frustrated and stops, gives up. That's the card she's playing right now. She's giving me some of what I want, but not fully, right? And if I think, and if I say that's okay, then that's our relationship. And that'll sneak up daily, right? Where, I'm, where we have disagreements more than we should. Like she's trying to give me her two cents of how she wants to deal with the situation. And so she understands that if she, if I can get this on cue, I have full control at this point. I have the recall and I have this submitted down where she's just ignoring the world around her. Um, that's a, a large level of control that a dog makes you earn by testing the other options and realizing that listening is actually the road of least resistance. And it changes the belief system and it changes the way they, they treat their human. So that, the whole time I'm talking to you, I have the pressure on, so <coughs> it's off now. But it, it told her that we're not done. This will turn off when, we're, when you did it right. Good. And now she did it, which is hard. It's hard to say, I'm gonna lay here and I'm, I'm gonna be so committed to this laying here, I'm gonna ignore the triggers in the environment. But that's what a leader needs out of their follower in order to go into the world successfully. Good. Again, very beginning part of the process here. That doesn't look very great, right? It's not like a pretty scene to see a dog like shaking like that. This is not the end result. This is a stepping stone to a much greater place that she would have never achieved. She might not have found, she might not be able to have a forever home if she can't stop these behaviors because they are not livable. She was not, she's here because she, you, it, it's very hard to live with her. Even though she's so sweet, she's very hard to live with. It's so stressful that it's like, oh, you, the humans, they, they have a big heart. They want, it, they want to keep her, they love her, but it's like, this is, they're thinking about it. There's no way they're not, right? So, this is the medicine. She has to, when she becomes a follower, she's giving control over to the humans and all the problems go away. It's really what it is, okay? Good. And she's doing it, she's choosing right now. Good. And she's even proud of her. Okay. So this kind of stuff is, is behind, underneath the commands when we're done. So when we go out and you see our, the videos where the dogs are doing so great in the real world on their walks and they, they just look amazing. It's because all this relationship stuff is underneath the commands and what holds it consistent and gives it to the owners is that we've, whenever I'm talking to her in such a fashion, this is involved. So this stimulation has all the associations on it. So that when they go home and they continue to, to work her and they use the same stimulation, the associations are there. That's the beauty of this. So the transfer is smoother than I think any, any point in history when, coming, when it comes to dog training, right? Because we have a consistent feeling and sensation that was there from the beginning that is associated with submission and follower. As the escape from the stem is a mindset of being a follower, and they understand that that's what we explain to them. That's why we're in business and in demand is because we're able to explain that to them. We're talking about hierarchy. Command or secondary. This is what I tell them in my way. And, and, and so they know that we're not talking about the down rail. They know we're not really talking about the sit. They know it's, I'm talking about not, I'm talking about you submitting to my leadership. Once that's done, the dog has changed. And then they, and then we see a glow and we see a dog who's a good companion and we say, wow, they're ready to go. They're ready to go home. And it transfers over and the dog is highly likely to have a forever home. Good. So, to get to anything great, right? There's gonna be moments of pressure. Pressure meaning like a, a little bit of stress. It's calculated because we're in control. It's not like nature's giving it to her in a way she can't handle. I'm giving her something she can handle, um, but it's gonna be difficult, but she needs to do it. And that pressure is gonna, like they say, pressure creates diamonds, right? It's gonna create the best version of herself. 
So this is, this is actually a gift to her that she just doesn't know yet, okay? It, it's not a punishment to be sent to a training program that does rehab. It's a gift to the dog. And, and she'll realize that in the end and she'll be her happiest self, okay? So thanks for watching this. I wanted to show the process because this is part of the process and it's not always pretty, but in the end it is very pretty, right? Okay, you know about the you know about the butterfly. You know what it was before it was a butterfly. And this ugly little caterpillar. No, just, I'm just kidding. I like caterpillars too. Anyway, she's doing great. I'm gonna release her. Good girl. Great. Yay! <laughs>